busy day on the farm here. I actually just took the kids breakfast out in the tractor. They are riding with Josh. They absolutely love field days and today they're cutting alfalfa, I believe. And so he's busy out there doing that. I have a lot of work to do inside, a lot of kind of mundane tasks, working in the kitchen some, I have some laundry to clean up. I also wanna take you outside to the garden and kind of show you what I'm doing as a preventative for some of my plants as we start getting into the season where there's more bugs, aphids, that kind of thing. And then I also have an incredible recipe to share with you that I'm so excited for. I've been looking forward to this day for quite some time now, trying to perfect my sourdough croissants. And I have good news for you. It was worth the wait. It is such a tasty recipe and I can't wait to share it with you. Let me know in the comments below what you are working on today and let's get some work done together. show you the view out my kitchen window this time of the year is always oh sorry we are super backlit aren't we it's always so fun for me whenever they start putting the cows down in the summer to graze out in the meadow so these are all the pregnant mama cows the cows that are gonna have a calf here in the next couple weeks but let me show you my view Have you ever heard of letting your mattress breathe? <laughs> I guess that's what we're doing today because it's almost 11 o'clock and I've actually been studying more on it and it's kind of intriguing. Let me know if you do it, but apparently because your body loses so many like dead skin cells and all this stuff while you sleep, your sheets are actually kind of gross if you, and your mattress if you don't let them air out and can actually like grow mold and stuff like that. So anyway, you live and you learn. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Brook Linen. And to say that I am excited would be a huge understatement. Basically, Brook Linen is a luxury sheet company that makes high quality goods to elevate your home. As you already know, I am such a fan of natural fibers in our home, whether it's the clothes we wear, or the sheets we sleep on. I've tried to be very intentional with that. So I got Brook Linen's washed linen set. And linen, if you don't know, is more absorbent and more breathable than even cotton, which has obvious benefits then for your body even as you're sleeping. Another thing that I really love about linen is how it gets softer after each wash. So these sheets are already crazy soft like just feeling them i'm like mm, yes can it be bedtime now with each wash it only gets softer and softer and softer brooke linen was founded on the philosophy that people deserve simple and beautiful home essentials at a fair price you guys put your flat sheet all the way up to the top or only part ways mom always did it like this for company we'd go back part ways and do like a trifold that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> oh, and if you're wondering, the sheet set that I got is in the white linen core set. And then the duvet, which you're about to see, is the most beautiful. It's actually right here. 
most beautiful kind of grayy color. This is called cloud gray and I thought that would be so beautiful on here. Y'all know I love my neutrals, but if that is not you, they actually have some beautiful color options as well. And shopping online was actually really fun. It comes in a bundle, so you start with your, I think it was the sheets, and then you can add your duvet and your pillowcases. This comes with four pillowcases, the fitted sheet, the flat sheet, and then the duvet cover. Brooklinen is running their Memorial Day sale right now, so I'll have that linked in the description box below. It is 20% off now through May 31, so an amazing time to stock up on high quality bed sheets. This would make an amazing wedding gift, anniversary gift. Fun fact, the day this video is going live, it's actually Josh and I's 11 year wedding anniversary, which is so exciting. But but this would be an incredible anniversary gift, housewarming gift, kind of the gift that keeps on giving. Okay, finally made it out to the garden and it is so windy today so I hope you can <laughs> even understand me right now but our agronomist mentioned the other day that there's aphids coming out so kind of as a preventative measure for that I am using diatomaceous earth we have Amish neighbors that literally put this stuff on everything like it's layered on and if you know anything about Amish they have beautiful gardens but this is supposed to be really good especially on viney things so I'll be putting this on cantaloupe watermelons cucumbers and then my roses are actually right behind you I have to show you they are just starting to bloom loaded in buds right now I think the aphids are starting to get on them so I have a friend who's really good with roses and she is like giving me all the details on how to care for Rose as well. So I need to get a couple more things to put on them, but I'll start off with this diatomaceous earth. morning now and we are just about to go down to the croissants and get those shaped ready to roll but I wanted to share two new outfits with you from the new Flora May collection I think this is called the Bexley tee I'll have it linked down below if you're interested but I love the ribbed detail in this it's so subtle but just gives it a little bit of texture and it is a very stretchy fabric I'm wearing a small I wanted it to be pretty fitted it's definitely not like skin tight or anything. It's still a little bit loose. It has a little pocket detail. And then this skirt is so fun. It has pockets. And then it has the most subtle kind of gingham print. Super fun. I love that it's so subtle. It's not like in your face really. And then also the... 
remember the name of this dress. I think it's maybe the Portland, I'm not sure, but it's a beautiful linen dress. This one reaches maybe two, three inches past my knee. I'm 5'7". It's a beautiful linen fabric. They also have this one in cream. It has pockets and the buttons are functioning, so it is nursing friendly. I love that it has a nice high neckline. It is sleeveless, just like this. The cardigan is from Fern V. And then I paired that with this little bracelet is just from Amazon. over on Instagram make these croissants a number of times and I was like oh my word they look so good so the reason that I'm sharing this with you today is not because it's my original recipe the reason I'm sharing it with you today is this is literally a four page recipe and I've seen I think it was this exact recipe or one similar to this a months ago and was like oh that looks so good but was just intimidated because literally a four page recipe. So my whole purpose in sharing this with you is for one, if you don't already know about this recipe to direct you to it, but for two, to do a visual of like, this is what the recipe means. Cause that's what I wished I had when I first saw this recipe. All that to say, I just weighed 250 grams of butter. I'm gonna mix that in a bowl with one and a half tablespoons of flour and I was totally planning to film last evening when I mixed the dough together. There's nothing special about the dough. You literally use a fed starter and then it's flour, sugar, salt, water, and a bit of butter, I believe. Josh and the older kiddos ended up being away last evening and I had the little girls and bless her heart, Abby was having a night. So I just kind of tucked it in where I could find time to do it. But a good rule of thumb when you're starting on this recipe is I just do the math backwards. So the dough needs to sit for three hours before bedtime. So I just count back from like three hours. I think I ended up putting mine on around 6.45, which meant that at 9.45, it was ready to put in the fridge for night. So that's just an easy way, sometimes counting back of like, okay, I wanna go to bed at this time. So then this is when I need to start it. That's all I've done. I mixed it for six minutes. It's still in the fridge right now, but that part of it is honestly just very standard sourdough process. This one I would consider a little bit more advanced, but like any sourdough recipe, I feel like it's not hard. It's just a process. And this one is a little bit more of a process than some. So I'm gonna grab some parchment paper and then we're gonna make a butter packet. I am going to spoon my butter onto here and then I actually go and get out a ruler and measure for this recipe. So I might be a little extra but I'm terrible with estimating so I will actually measure and make sure that I have the right dimensions in my rectangles in how thin to spread this because it does make a difference in the end as to how your croissants and the layers turn out. this over onto one half of my parchment paper and then I'll just fold this over and squish it down. This is supposed to be about six by eight inches in length. This is what my little butter packet looks like now. I'm just gonna fold in the edges like this. And then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for about 10 minutes just to get it firm. While my butter is chilling, I'm gonna go ahead and roll out my croissant dough. So I'm gonna flour the surface a little bit and then we'll just put this on. This is pretty firm now after being in the fridge 
all night. But I want to roll this out to about an 8 by 16 inch rectangle. So we are going to take this out and put it right in the center of our rolled out croissant dough. All right, and then we're going to fold it kind of like an envelope, bringing the top down and the bottom up. And you can kind of see these layers right here. This whole folding process is what gives the croissants that signature like layered look. So pretty important step. What I'm going to do next is give this dough a quarter of a turn and we'll roll it out again. This time I'm rolling it into a 10 by 20 inch rectangle and then we're going to fold it the same way again, bringing the top third down and the bottom third up, kind of like an envelope like this. I'm going to wrap this back up. And then we're gonna pop this back in the fridge again for another 30 minutes. Okay, Abby is sleeping in the next room, so I have to be quiet, but it is just over 30 minutes later, and so I have my dough back out. I'm gonna give it a 90 degree turn from last time. So basically what's happening is you keep flip-flopping. So this is how we ended last time's roll when we folded it. So now we're gonna start rolling it this way and roll it like this, and then we'll fold it up also the other way. So basically it keeps flipping like this and that's what gives it its layers. So we're gonna do the second fold now, pop it back in the fridge for another 30 minutes. and then it is time to roll it out for the actual cutting. So this time we're gonna go make an 11 by 24 inch triangle again with a folded side facing out. You feel kind of like a pastry chef with all of this rolling. <laughs> Okay, that looks about right. So then I'm just gonna go, again, got my ruler, and I'm gonna make a little marks every two inches along both sides in order to get some nice straight edges on my croissant rolls. to roll up we're just going to start on the wide and roll them up tightly to the skinny end I've only ever made the regular ones they are phenomenal but I kind of have a hankering to try the chocolate ones so I was looking up some other chocolate croissant recipes and seeing how they do that I think technically it's called it looks like chocolate a pain but I'm sure that's not how you say it pa au chocolat that's fun to say pa au chocolat <laughs> I'm probably completely butchering it. 
but that basically it's a chocolate croissant but everywhere that I'm seeing this they just put some chunks of chocolate on the end and then roll it all up and so when you bite into it it's just like a glob of chocolate in the center which I'm sure is really tasty but when I do the sourdough braid and make that a chocolate version I melt my chocolate spread it on and then braid it and you get it in the nice layers so what I'm wondering <laughs> is if it wouldn't work to do that here so I'm gonna do half of these my regular way just do the plain croissants I know that those turn out and then the other half I'm gonna try this we'll start with the plain ones here so we'll just roll these up tightly like before rising now and used the end pieces for these which I think traditionally the pen au chocolat am I saying that right is more of a rectangle so I think this is traditionally how they would look more than these I just think this swirl is really pretty and then the plain ones over here and then these actually need to rise for another four to five hours at room temperature. Um, you can either put them in the stove with a cup of water, stove turned off just to keep them moist, or what I do is just maybe two or three times throughout this process, brush them with some water. So I just get my pastry brush and brush them occasionally just to keep them from drying out. It will literally be dinner time till these are ready, but I can't wait to try them. It is four hours later, and I probably look a wreck after working outside a bunch, so I apologize about that, but I am mixing an egg with a little bit of water. I'm gonna mix this together, and then we'll put a little egg wash on these croissants and bake them. guys if you try this recipe make sure to let me know I want to know how they turn out I already told you I don't like taste testing in front of the camera but I have to let you hear this crunch so you can see here all the layers in the croissant that's what all that folding did all the butter in my opinion this needs nothing on it as far as butter but listen to the crunch Mm. So incredibly flaky and delicious. I just can never get over the layers in these things. The chocolate ones also turned out really yummy, um, but you can't see the layers quite as good because obviously the chocolate kind of goes everywhere, but we will definitely be enjoying these tonight. It's about a week later now, and I wanted to give a little update after sleeping on these sheets for a while. We've got, had some warm nights, and they have been wonderful. In fact, I asked Josh this morning, I was like, babe, what do you think of the new sheets? And he really likes them as well, so I think they're deemed our new favorite sheets in the house. So if you're also looking to upgrade your sheets, love linens like I do, don't forget to check out Brook Linens Memorial Day sale going on right now. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you were inspired and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye friends. Golden, golden thing.